with Chicago Magazine, Bears tight end Martellus Bennett doesn't understand why it's the quarterback on the football team that needs to be the leader. Skip, your comments on what Marty said about Cuddy. Marty Cuddy? I like that, Stephen. My eh? favorite two nicknames. <sighs> My comment on what Martellus said about Jay Cutler is that Martellus, Stephen A., tiptoed right to the edge of ripping his quarterback for a lack of leadership and stop short because he knows that Cuddy throws Marty lots of nice passes, <laughs> throws him the sugar, if you will, and they do have a good wavelength and a good rapport. So I think Marty knows, Martellus knows exactly what Jay is and isn't. I've never said he was a leader. Jay Cutler lives in his own world. He only cares about Jay Cutler. He has enough trouble leading Jay Cutler, let alone trying to lead the rest of the football team. Well, you can sit there and say he's ripping the quarterback. I just think he's speaking fact. He understands that in a great, great sports town like Chicago, uh, they have a leaderless quarterback situation. And that's really what this comes down to. We all know that Jay Cutler's a joke. We all know that he has no business being a quarterback in Chicago. We all know that he's only still there because somebody, I think it was Phil Emery, was stupid enough to overpay him and place his faith uh, in the franchise in this man's hands. We all know this. We all know that Jay Cutler, the only time we've seen him smile was when he was signing his contract for the media to see. He basically looked everybody in the face and said, I hoodwinked all of y'all. I got my money, and we all know I didn't deserve it. This is what the situation is with Jay Cutler. Mm. He's never going to change, Skip. He's mm. going to be the same old way, Skip. That's just the way that it is, and there's well, no way around it. He can play, he can throw, but he doesn't care. Yeah. He's leaderless. He's devoid of leadership okay, ability. I, and that's I, it. I'll let you get away with that, but not joke. He is not a joke. And I'm speaking as a, I'm as not a talking Vanderbilt about a graduate. But I'm he, not talking about a talent. The, the joke did throw that team all the way to the NFC Championship game. Am I right really? about that? Really, really. Well, one, really, playoff, really he did. one playoff appearance in nine years. Well, really, that's what you're going to bring far. up? He did make a, a dead clock is right twice a day. How many times I got to no, tell you this stuff? Uh, he is re it's ridiculous. Uh, oh, don't get me started. Uh, I've been in a good mood, Skip. Yeah. I've been in a good mood until you, br you brought that subject up. First yeah. it was the Knicks, but I let that slide. I didn't mm -hmm. fall for that. But this is going too <laughs> daggone far, okay? He's never going to change, Skip. He's going to be the same old way, Skip. This is who he is. It's who he is. Mm -hmm. He is not a person that is going to step up and do what's necessary to lead any team to okay. victory. He's a dude that's going to steal money. He should be arrested for theft, okay? 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 Don't get me started with him. Okay, wait a second. Does Kobe Bryant steal money? Because I don't think Kobe's much of a leader, right? Kobe is cute. <laughs> Excuse oh, me. What? You're comparing yeah, winless, leaderless, <laughs> no, no, leadership, no, no, no leadership, no championship no leadership, having no leadership. Jay Cutler yeah. to five-time yeah. champion well, Kobe Bryant? Them, right? Kobe Bryant? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you Kobe Bryant cares too much. This dude don't care at all. Mm. Are you, are you really? I I wouldn't blame Kobe if he never spoke to you again for just, for just well, saying what you said. I wouldn't blame time, Kobe so if I, he just banned himself from ever talking to you again. Yeah. I, you are unbelievable. Yeah. You, Jay Cutler, you mentioned him in the you same started, breath as Kobe you Bryant? Vanderbilt Jay Cutler? You think the Jay yeah. Cutler? Yeah. And I ended it with Kobe he Bryant. Jay Cutler. I remember when you called Aaron Rodgers a prima donna. At least that makes sense. Not only is he the best in the game, it. he's a Super Bowl champion. He's a Super Bowl it. champion. Aaron Jay Rogers Cutler. Jay Cutler you has no right to even be in the same basket. state as Kobe oh, Bryant. Should, but he shouldn't time. be in the same state. No. The same state. They need to throw him out of Chicago. <laughs> That's what they need to do. Stay yeah. calm. You're in Cali, all right? Yeah, they need to throw him out of LA. Oh. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Russell Westbrook has some bad blood, but it's not what you think. We'll explain that after the break. Sports put together a very good article predicting the best and worst case scenarios for all the NFC teams in the upcoming season. That is just around the corner. I cannot wait. Here's a look at the potential best and potential worst records for a few of the teams we're going to discuss. The Cowboys, 12 and 4 or 4 and 12. The Eagles, 13 and 3 or 3 and 13. And then the Seahawks, 14 and 2 or 8 and 8. So of the three teams I just mentioned, Skip, the worst case scenario, we're focusing on the negative here. Mm -hmm. Which team is it most likely to happen for? <sighs> Stephen, the obvious choice is my Dallas Cowboys, and I'll tell you why. Not just the loss of Dion Skandrick yesterday, because oh, I'm calling him now. Stop it. Orlando Skandrick. God bless you. <sighs> when I look at my Dallas Cowboys schedule, it ain't easy. 
They've got to play New England, at Green Bay, Seattle, at New Orleans, at Buffalo, at Miami, even at Tampa Bay. And you know, I think Tampa's going to be the surprise team of the NFL this year. It's a much easier schedule to me than the Eagles schedule. But the reason I'm not doubting my Cowboys is because we got Tony Romo and the Eagles don't. I don't know who the Eagles have at quarterback. God bless Sam Bradford. I hope he can stay upright the whole year. But even if he does, is he the answer in Chip Kelly's offense? I, I have my doubts. We can go down the rest of the litany of quarterbacks they have on their roster. We can make jokes about Tim Tebow, but I won't. And it brings me to the Seattle Seahawks. To me, if I had to pick a team most likely to collapse this year, quote unquote, to fall, as, as this says, to eight and eight, what, what was it? It goes from 14 and two to eight and eight for Seattle, I think it was. Seattle, yep, 14 yeah, okay. to eight and eight. So the most likely to go to eight and eight would be the Seahawks. Super Bowl loser syndrome. What you have talked about the whole off season, the internal dissension over the decision to throw the football instead of handing to beast mode on the final play of the Super Bowl. That can have a lingering effect on a team with so many strong personalities in the locker room. Now, I'm just doing worst case here, but we know Cam is holding out. That can have a negative impact on a team and on a player when he finally does sign, report, whatever he's going to do, he could be behind and get off to a bad start. Earl Thomas is coming off a serious surgery. Can he get right and stay right? We don't know. He's a high collision player. Richard Sherman decided not to have surgery on his, I think it was his elbow or his arm. And w will that be the right decision going forward? Will his arm plague him all year? I, I don't know. So you got the whole secondary with a lot of question marks. Then you, you have beast mode at age 29, ninth year, Will he start to show some mileage? Sometime in this period, he will. And that brings us to the new addition, Jimmy Graham. Is he the right fit for them? We talked about it. Is, is he the tough guy that they need on offense to be the possession-catching tight end? Obviously, he has all kinds of ability, but is he the right psychological fit for this football team? So I could see where Pete Carroll's rah-rah wears thin this year, and they could get off to a bad start and struggle their schedule isn't easy. They got to go to Green Bay, go to Dallas, go to Baltimore. I, I could see them having a bigger struggle than either Dallas or Philadelphia. Skip Bayless, I would tell you the team most likely, with, in terms of a worst case scenario, most likely for that to happen of the three teams mentioned would be the Philadelphia Eagles. When I think about Seattle and the Cowboys, that's a team, those are two teams that are intact. Same quarterback, uh, in Seattle's case, same running back. Um, and the addition of a guy like Jimmy Graham, who I think would be tremendous for Russell Wilson. Uh, the defense is returning. Got to make sure they resign Cam Chancellor. Give that brother his money. He deserves it. Uh, and, and he's the ringleader on defense, Legion of Boom. Uh, in the case of the Dallas Cowboys, yeah, you've had some injuries, but you also have some guys returning like a Sean Lee. Rolando McClain ultimately will return. Uh, you look at the addition of Greg Hardy or uh, Randy Gregory, those guys, and the pass rush they expected to have. Um, I don't see them falling to 4-12. and 12. Plus, you got Tony Romo. You still got Dez. You still got Jason Witten. You still got Cole Beasley. You still got Terrence Williams. Uh, you don't have DeMarco Murray. That's going to be a problem for you. You'll just throw the football more. That doesn't mean you'll fall way off the wagon. It just means you may not be four and twelve. I mean, you just means you're not going to be four and twelve. But when you look at the Philadelphia Eagles, Sam Bradford question mark as to how long he'll last coming off of two straight ACL surgeries. Yeah, they got Demarco Murray and Ryan Matthews running the football. Uh, we understand that. Questions at receivers, even though Aguilar, along with Jordan Matthews, is big time. They still got a lot to prove because they're both relatively young, and now they're going to be the focal point. You don't have an experienced veteran like Jeremy Macklin out there. Uh, you know, don't get me started with Riley Cooper. And so when you look at it from that perspective, along with the fact that the Eagles had one of the worst pass defenses to the game, yeah, you added Byron Maxwell, and you added Walter Thurman the third, and I get all of that. But they are they enough? Uh, to bring you from what was it? I mean, what was their defense? Their defense was ranked 28th overall, second to last against the pass. Is how, how much of an improvement can you really expect them to make? I think those are the legitimate question marks right now. I think it's undeniable, and I think you have to look at it from the perspective that if there's a team that can fall apart before our very eyes, it's the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't believe they will do it. I still think they got a shot. They probably could win the NFC East. 
But in terms of just this question as a worst case scenario kind of thing, if you're going to pick the Cowboys, the Seahawks, or the Eagles, I say there's a greater possibility for the Eagles to wet the bed than anybody else. Mm. Molly, this is a rare day on first take because Why? my partner, my brother from another mother, actually said some nice things about my Dallas Cowboys. Some positive, Progress. upbeat, and correct things about my Dallas it's because Cowboys. Because he's in LA, he's happy. I guess so. Laid back, the sunshine, yeah. he's feeling good. He's got his blazer on. He's chilling. It's kind of true. It's right? kind of true. Yeah, it's kind of true. La la. We don't call you know the, the fellas. We don't call it Los Angeles or L.A. We call it La La. Okay, just you so you know my you life. you just enjoy so. La La. Yes. Coming up, former NFL lineman Jonathan Martin speaks out about his time in the NFL. He has very strong words. We're going to discuss those when we come back. Stay here. <clears throat>